Well, good morning, all. Um, I call to order the March 20th meeting of the Senior uh, Activity Center Commission. Um, if any, everybody wants to go around the room and announce who they are, I'm Stephanie Getz, Chair of this Commission. Emily Rendell Araujo, Director of Senior Services. Randy Meyer, Commission Member. Joe Edwin, Alderman. John Schulke, Vice Chair. Natasha Torrey, Member. Uh, Keith Jacks, Member. And online we have. Sue Garski, a member and volunteer. Excellent. All right, we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Stacey Feast. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so in the email that Emily sent would have been the minutes from the January 17th meeting. Any discussion? Should we maybe have the location in the heading of where the meeting was? Good point. Um, I guess I could ask the clerks if I don't know if that's it's kind of a standard boilerplate thing that this the system spits out, but I could ask about it. Yeah. Any other discussion? All right, do I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we'll do a review of the senior services financial financials. Sure, so I just, I just want to mention something. Um, our two morning volunteers this morning, one called in and one has not shown up and Josh has started leading a class. Um, so there's no one up at the front desk. So I might be like kind of popping in and out um, just to make sure that nobody's up there all alone or waiting, waiting for help. Yeah. So I will bruise through the er, breeze. I will breeze through this relatively quickly. Um, this is a new thing that I'm hoping that the commission is okay reviewing now that all of these things are headed over to the city side of things versus the friends. Um, so you can certainly all read and look at numbers. Um, I guess I will look, I, you know, on the, on the top area, um, we've got some advertising money coming in. That's, um, when, when organizations or individuals choose to advertise in the newsletter or on our email, membership fees, pretty self-explanatory, program service fees, that's any program that has a fee with it, any of the fitness programs, any of the art programs that have a fee, um, cafe revenue, pretty self-explanatory, and then trip stuff. Um, we're still, that, that number is a little fluid just because um, how we tracked it with the friends, uh, if you have an accounting background, um, how we did it with the friends was we would put it in a, as, as money came in, we'd throw it in a payable account and then make payments out of that payable account. And once the trip was done and we were positive that all the money was in and all the expenses were out, then we would release the profits. Um, we're still kind of working through that, that process with the city. So don't put too much stock in that trip, trip profit number. It looks like we've made our, we've almost made our year and that's not okay. That's not accurate. Um, on the bottom end, on the expense side, nothing too surprising here, I don't think. Um, I guess any any questions about anything you see down there? So there was discussion <coughs> um, last month that the Child Advocacy Center is renting space now. Yes, I believe they have their lease is $1. Okay. I am not oh, sure if okay, that's $1 okay. per month or $1 per year. Okay. okay. Um, I will say I know that due to the funding, um, the Section 108 funding of this building, any <sighs> permanent tenant income that comes in has to be used to pay down the balance of that loan. Okay. So the $1 or $12. Okay. And to Natasha's point about um, that group, will they also be hiring their own janitorial services? Yeah, so I believe um, regular utility costs will be absorbed by us. That's just part of the agreement, but um, we won't be doing any of their um, cleaning. I, I think 
some regular maintenance might be on us. Um, that kind of depends, and it, I'd have to defer to my colleagues in DPW for more of that. Okay. I'm sure it's all spelled out in the lease, and I don't recall exactly what that says. And I don't mean to be insensitive, nope. but is the point of having them here to be a service to the community then? Um, the point of having them here, well, they're, the reason why the lease is so low is because they are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars up front to renovate the space. Okay. So I don't have a lot of experience with commercial leasing, but um, my understanding is that typically either you would pay a market rate lease for finished versus unfinished space, and this is obviously a dollar is not market rate, but I think it was more like the space is here, we don't need it and don't foresee needing it for the next 10 years, which I think is the length of their lease at this time. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. And also I would say they do work very, very closely with the Sheboygan Police Department and other police departments, so Great. yeah. Okay. All right, any further discussion over the financial statement for February 29th? All right, do I have a motion to approve? Move. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. So moved. Um, usage statistics, that would have been on page five of what Emily has sent us. Yeah, so um, pretty self-explanatory. You guys are used to seeing the spreadsheet by now. Um, active members, you know, like I said last time, I think um, 1,400, we're closer to 1,450 now, seems to be our equilibrium of membership. Um, unique visitors still hovers around 600, 700 every month. Um, and our average daily attendance did spike in February, which in my opinion is, it tracks with the weather we have now that we've been through a full year we can definitely say like september to april would be our busy season and then may through august things taper down all right any questions or discussion over the usage usage statistics all right 2024 summer. i think it's good to see that there's still new attendees that are coming in on a regular basis. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. well, and I would say um, with Silver Sneakers and Renew Active, we are seeing a lot of people that both, as they, if they were members and they're renewing their memberships, they're renewing with Renew Active or Silver Sneakers. And then um, we are getting people from, that haven't been members that say, oh, I can have a membership now because I have this. Um, there is one other Medicare reimbursement program called Silver and Fit. Well, there are, there are lots, but that is one that has crossed our paths that we have people who would like to get reimbursement through that. I am, it, it functions very similarly to Silver Sneakers and Renew Active. I have tried at least three times at this point to connect with Silver and Fit to get us signed up as a, as a partner organization. Not a lot of response on their end. So I don't know, maybe in five years, we'll be able to get that one going, uh, but I am, I am trying for that one. Are you going to be changing right. any of your programming based on the trends that you've seen now over the year? Well, so actually we are um, we are in the middle of a membership survey. So at the beginning of the month, um, we mm -hmm. sent out, it's, it's still, we're getting new surveys in every day. So it was in the March newsletter. We have a link online. Um, and so we have been reviewing that information as it comes in. So it's, you know, questions like, what types of programs would you like to see that we're not currently offering? Like obviously with programs that we are offering, the numbers tell us, right? So um, unfortunately, as I'm sure you all understand, we can't make everybody happy. So at the start of 2024, we did um, cut some like fitness programs that really never got more than a handful of people coming. And of course, so those handful of people, or we did have one person that was like, I was, thinking about maybe coming and now you took it away and well you know we had it for a whole so, um just some so yeah out. yeah so we are um I, in in april we'll take a, a a good look at those survey results and actually at our next commission meeting i plan to share aggregate results with all of you um and we did ask questions about you know like things people are looking for when the gym is done and other other things i will say um 
overwhelmingly responses have been very positive. So that's, that's good. Of course, a lot of the commentary, you, you know, a lot of the commentary is keep up the great job. And then of course there are people that have their grievances for whatever, but overwhelmingly um, the responses are very positive. Personally, I, I get overwhelmed when I see everything that I'm missing. <laughs> we'll have plenty to do when you get back, Sue. Okay, I know that garden. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, summer hours? Sure. So I wanted to bring this up. Um, I know a number of you have not been on the commission for super long. For those of you that have been around for a while, you might remember that before we opened up over here, we had a discussion of what our open hours should be. I believe at the old building before the pandemic, um, it was eight to four Monday through Thursday and eight to two on Fridays. Um, when we decided to open up here, we decided on 7.30 to four and uh, Monday through Thursday and 7.30 to two on Fridays, it's still 40 hours. So we're still open 40 hours. Um, I mean, it's eight, it's eight 11 right now and you can see that there are people here we often at, at 7 30 we have people waiting to come in the door so i think opening up at 7 30 is good um the the reason i wanted to bring up summer hours is because last year in the summer this place was absolutely dead on fridays after 12 o'clock so we do have in this time of year when it's our busier time of year we do have people here. I mean, it's quieter, but we'll have people here until two o'clock on Fridays when we close. However, often in the summer, there was absolutely nobody here between 12 o'clock and two o'clock on a Friday. So I wanted to open up that conversation to see what you guys think about it. Was it a question pertaining to the summer hours on the survey that you sent out? There was not. What would you like to use that extra time for? Well, what would help us is with our with our small team, um, you know, a lot of organizations struggle to manage all of vacation requests in the summer because that's when everyone wants to travel. For us, it's kind of nice that that's our quieter season, um, to be honest. A lot of Fridays last summer, we often only had like one person here because other people wanted to take off. Um, it would be it would be nice for scheduling just to even have those extra two like and if people were here i'd be fine like we'd be fine with staying open but it's the fact that like nobody's here mm -hmm. and then if our folks wanted to take off or you know head to a cabin for the weekend that kind of thing mm -hmm. um yeah when the summer when so, the summer so, will start and end i would think memorial day to labor day so pretty much june july august so you're saying no Friday or close at 12? I didn't catch it. Friday would close at 12. So just oh, two hours. Yeah. I feel sorry for the receptionist people on Fridays. There's, well, and there's nothing the, to do. Yeah, the volunteers often make those comments. Yeah. Which then they're probably less likely to want to volunteer. Yeah. So we actually like we shortened the length of the volunteer shifts on Fridays because four hours is too long. I mean, well, we're not open for eight hours, but even still like four hours is a long time when there's nothing to do. Do you have a lot of people that come in for uh, lunch on Friday? We don't serve lunch on Friday. You don't. So, so that's, that's already in place. So yep. Yep. Place. So that's part of it. Because that used to be closed. So it's coming for lunch. Right. Are we looking for a motion to approve? I, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know previously there had been discussion too about uh, potentially having later hours. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like that wouldn't be um, an option with staffing, right? So right now how we do it um, is really, we, we, I would say we don't have the staffing capacity to entertain regular expanded hours. What we do do is we will occasionally have special after hours programming if there's a staff person that's like willing to work it into their schedule and do it. So I'm not gonna direct anybody to say you have to be sure. here on Monday nights now, but for example, we have, um, we have a, a, 
man woman um, dancing couple that are doing Monday night dance classes and it's for a set period of weeks at a time mm -hmm. and that has been really successful I don't know that we're going to do it in the summer just because right. we see such a dip in our and it's beautiful it's, you know yeah. no one wants to be here on it right. when it's still nice out but um, I I think that'll continue mm -hmm. in the fall because it's been very popular and I do see when the gym is done I think there will be interest from the community and having like open pickleball for working people that sure. want to be able yeah. to access the gym. Um, so I will say like, if we close at noon on Fridays, our team is all still going to be working at least 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that we wouldn't have to be married to be right. in here yeah. later on Fridays. Okay. Well, I think that makes sense to close, I, you know, and then also as long as people are open-minded, maybe then it would be good to have one day that is, a set day that's open late like so then maybe thursday it's open two hours later and then with the understanding on friday that maybe people are even done working at noon too not mm -hmm. just that you're closed you know so early day mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah this um city council did approve for 2024 we now have an intern so that we have an intern in place right now her name is rebecca she's lovely or now rebecca rachel rebecca was our previous intern um and so she's working day shift, like helping us out on busier days at the front desk and getting her feet wet here. But part of my thought with expanding our team with part-time roles is that there might be like an opportunity there for um, our part-time person to maybe work like a split shift and say, okay, if, if we wanted to experiment with staying with our hours, I would say September would be the time to do it just because that's when people start to ramp up when it starts to get dark mm -hmm. again and cold. Right. Any further discussion about the summer hours? If there would if, be like, you know, like a um, Maryland's cooking class in that situation, it would start before 12 and just maybe go a little bit longer. Would that be still an option or not? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we kind of do that now as it is. So, I, yeah, I think uh, like Maryland's cooking class is a great example because we always do it on Fridays and it's she starts at 11. It's certainly not done at noon. It would just mean like the doors would be locked and, you know, we wouldn't have other people hanging around after that. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Is there a motion to approve um, the uh, Uptown Social closing on Friday starting after Labor or after Memorial Day and through Labor Day? Closing at noon on Fridays with the understanding that the staff is still working 40 hours a week? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Anything else for the good of the order? How did. I just had this update on the gym. That's exactly oh, what I was going to ask for. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, we got bids. Um, there were two bids that came in. Um, one was significantly lower than the other and significantly lower than the um, estimated budget, um, actually about $200,000 lower. So we were, the estimate we got a little bit more than a year ago was $850,000. And then the lowest bid came in at 640, that was Mike Koenig Construction. So actually um, it went to council on Monday and then next week it will go to the contract will go to, um, is it personnel and finance? Finance and personnel. Yep, yep. So Monday I will be at that meeting to discuss, um, answer any questions about it. And then the following week, um, which is a little screwy because it's Easter week. So I think it's April 3rd. The yeah. Council is on Wednesday that week. Then that'll go back to council for hopeful approval. And then it'll be up to the contractor when they can get rolling. But um, so I know I, we're very pleased. Um, at how much under under estimate it came in. Um, of course, there's always change orders and those can add up and be surprising. But um, with the $850,000 that's been earmarked for this project, any money that's left from that will go into the um, senior services fund balance. So that will be like for when we, when we look at phase three, um, which, uh, and it's not, not a secret. We do like when people give us feedback, we do listen to it. It's just I can't snap my fingers and make things happen. But um, I think I've shared with you one of the number one 
um, requests we get is for another set of restrooms closer to the activity room and this side of the building. So our initial building plans were that the second set of restrooms would be on the east side um, by the east door. And so we're, we're since adjusting our plans that the second set of restrooms would go in this southwest corner directly across the hall from the activity room. So basically our two sets of restrooms would be in opposite corners of the building um, so that people don't have as far to walk to get to either set. And, and we also get a lot of requests for a water fountain closer to the activity room because that's where people are expending their energy. So um, hopefully we can use some okay. of that money to make that next phase in the process get moving. Was there any concern during the council meeting about how much lower that bid was compared to the other one of who originally renovated the space? There was actually no discussion on it because all they did was refer to it. their process. They just have to like acknowledge it and send it. So that might come up at okay. personnel and finance. Um, I will say, so it was the um, Hassinger that did the first phase of construction, they were the higher bid. They were very surprised that Koenig was able to come in so low. So I, you know, I would defer to my colleagues in DPW. It could be that they're slow. We have heard industry wide that some, some contractors are slowing down, like the, the recovery from the pandemic has seemed to even out. Um, and, you know, there were such shortages with supply chain and, you know, projects. And now that seems to have balanced out. So, um, when folks complain about how this has taken longer, we're, we're saving money by, you know, like working it through this process. I think it's great to hear that it's a local contractor. Mm -hmm. Don't and always win that way. Yeah, for what it's worth, um, you know, Hassinger is not in Sheboygan County, but a lot yeah. of the subcontractors that they used on phase one were. So it was still yeah. a lot of local business. Right. It's nice when that works out. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Our next meeting is Wednesday, May 15th at 8 a.m. Um, same spot. <laughs> All right. And then if so there's this no- this is my last, this is my last meeting then, right? Ooh, let me, let me check here. I, yeah, I think you're right. I did tell you that yours, you have to take a year off, right? I think so. Let me see if there's anyone else that their terms are. Are you the only one? Oh, Natasha's first term is up, but if you're interested, you can have another term. Put you on the spot. Right? I know. I'm you like, don't have to answer. Is, is that a question right now? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I sent Sue an email because, like, we can't, you know, she has to take a year off and then okay. come back. Are we looking to recruit any additional members? Um, I would think yes. So I do have um, two members of the Friends Board that have expressed interest in also serving on the commission. And, of course, they do live in the city limits. So maybe for the, um, with Sue cycling off, um, we'll have two spots open because we have one vacant spot now. Okay. Um, so then we could cycle those two on starting in May, should the mayor and the council agree. Great. Was there an adjournment? No. Okay. <laughs> Is there any further discussion for this meeting? All right. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so move. So move. Second. Bye, John. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um,